Hey guys and welcome back to another video on The Crew 2 and this one we're going to be looking at the best street racing cars. Street racing is arguably the most popular racing category in this game and while the cars aren't quite as expensive as the hypercar category, the higher end vehicles are still quite pricey. In this video I'm going to be looking at a range of different cars to work out what the overall best car is as well as seeing whether it's actually worth it to spend more. So let's get into it. So I've chosen four cars which I've put into three different categories budget, mid-range and high-end. For the budget category I have this rather interesting looking Nissan Fairlady from I believe 1970 which costs only 60,000 credits. The mid-range car I've chosen is the Dodge Viper which is 370,000 and the two high-end cars that I've chosen are the Lamborghini Huracan and the Audi R8 V10 Plus which cost 623,000 and 520,000 credits respectively. Out of the box, these cars would be very different, with the cheaper ones being much slower than the more expensive ones. All these cars are however maxed out with all parts at Perth level 280. This will show the full potential of each car so we can see how far apart they really are if they have the same parts installed. So now onto the tests which will show the strengths and weaknesses of each car. First up is top speed. According to the game, the Nissan is in last with a rated top speed of 225mph. That is however only 1 mph slower than the Lambo and the Dodge Viper which is pretty impressive. The Audi comes out on top overall however by another 1 mph with a top speed of 227. To test these stats I went over to the salt flats to see how fast the cars could really go. I used nitro in these runs as most people would use this in a race. All cars were able to get to roughly their quoted top speed although the Dodge Viper was actually able to go slightly faster. Once the nitro was engaged the Audi came out on top with 245 followed closely by the Viper with the Nissan and Huracan joint last with 243 mph. The next test is on short term acceleration, something arguably more important than top speed. The game gives each car a quarter mile time as well as a 0-60 time. For the rated quarter mile time the Audi was in first, followed by the Lambo, then the Viper and the Nissan. The Audi is once again rated first in terms of 0-60, however second is the Dodge Viper which was quite interesting to see, followed by the Huracan and then the Nissan. The Nissan was rated last in both of these, however you should know that it was only marginal. To test acceleration I used a speed trap. I launched each car from exactly the same place using only one bar of nitro, which I thought was a pretty accurate simulation of a race start. The Lamborghini came out on top here with 179.1 miles per hour, 3 miles per hour quicker than the Audi in second. What however did surprise me was that the 1970 Nissan actually beat the Dodge Viper which shows how nippy this car is. It was also interesting to see how the Audi fell behind slightly on this test even though it had the best acceleration stats. For the final test I put the cars up against a Lamborghini Aventador hypercar. For reference the hypercar used was at a very similar perf level to the street race cars. I did this because I knew the street cars would be much quicker off the line, however I wanted to test their mid to long term acceleration something hypercars are very good at. Out of the blocks, all cars pulled ahead of the Aventador as expected, however the test was to see how long the cars could stay ahead of the Lambo over a few laps of this track. This test was incredibly interesting as while these cars are relatively even over a salt flat or a very short distance, this, let's just call it middle distance, really set them apart. The Lamborghini won this test, it took just over two laps and three quarters for the Aventador to overtake. The Audi was quite a bit behind, managing just 2.5 laps before being overtaken. The big gap was here though, with third place being the Dodge Viper, which only managed just over half a lap in front of the event store. The Nissan was rather impressively just behind the Viper though, managing just under half a lap. This was quite interesting to see as the Viper was actually very strong in the previous acceleration test. The big difference though seems to be in the acceleration between around 150 to around 220 miles per hour, which the two cheaper cars seem to struggle with. Finally, I want to talk about the handling of these cars. I could have done a test for this, however, it would have been very hard to make a handling comparison fair. After extensively driving all four cars, this is what I found. First off, the Huracan is in a league of its own here. It's very stable at high and low speeds through the corners, which makes it quite easy to drive. The Audi, on the other hand, did not particularly impress me in the handling department. It can corner well, however, it can be skittish and unpredictable out of higher speed corners, making it quite a bit harder to drive. The Viper is a bit of a middle ground between these two, not quite as good as the Lambo but easier to drive than the Audi. Now you're probably expecting me to say that the Nissan is way behind and that's the end of it, however it's not quite as simple as that. Through higher speed corners, yes it is a long way behind the three other cars, 
However, through tight, low-speed corners is where this car is incredibly good. It's easily the most agile at low speeds, which is likely down to its low weight. I'd say through a small city route, it's possibly even better to drive than the Lambo. So overall then, well in terms of performance I believe the Lamborghini Huracan is the best car. While it trades blows with the Audi in terms of straight line performance, the handling is far superior. I can't say that it's the best by that much though, the Audi is pretty close behind and the Dodge Viper is also incredibly good while being much much better value. It's about half the price of the Lambo and because of that I would easily have it instead of the Audi and maybe even the Huracan and spend the money I saved on a hypercar or something like that. The Nissan however did really surprise me, it cost 10 times less which is over half a million credits and if I'm honest it was meant to be a bit of a joke car however it can still win most races on ace difficulty with a little bit more effort. So then, I can recommend the Dodge Viper to pretty much anyone who has the credits for it, especially for newer players but it's also good for more experienced ones. For completely new players though, the Nissan is a very good car. It's nimble which makes it great for the tighter courses and as you upgrade it, it does get seriously fast. If you have played a lot of this game though and you do have the credits to throw around, then the Lambo or the Audi is a no brainer. They're not miles faster than the Viper although they will make your races noticeably easier to win. So that's all for this video, if you have enjoyed it then a like or a sub would be absolutely amazing. Let me know what your favourite car is down in the comments and if you have any questions I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Anyway that's all for this one so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.